Our Swift UI app is looking good so far. We have the stack of cards we can swipe through to the right or to the left. We have a timer, we have haptic feedback, we have accessibility support and more. But what we have so far is actually surprisingly full of glitches that are holding it back. Some big, some small, but all worth fixing. First, it's possible with some careful touches to move cards around that aren't at the top of the stack. For example, I can tap down here and drag it to the right, which is clearly very confusing because you shouldn't see that one there. We can fix this in content view by using allows hit testing for our cards. We can say we allow hit testing only if this is the last card, the card on top of our deck. And that will be index is equal to cards.count minus one, the topmost card. Second, our UI is a bit of a mess with voiceover. Try it out on your phone, on a real device, turn on voiceover and swipe your way through. You'll find things like you can type the background and it'll say background image, which is not helpful. It's actually unhelpful. It's just getting in the way. Worse, if you swipe right and left to move between the various UI elements, you'll find voiceover reads out all the cards, including the ones that aren't currently at the top. To fix this is very similar to using allows hit testing. We're going to use dot accessibility hidden. Which one should be hidden? Basically all of them that aren't the top card. So the top card will be index is equal to cards.count minus one. The rest of them, these will be index is less than cards.count minus one. And when that happens, just ignore the thing for voiceover purposes, not even available to be seen. There's a third problem with our app, and it's a result of us using gestures to control things. I love gestures, and they are great fun when building your apps, but if you have specific usage needs, they can be very, very hard to use gestures. In this app, our gestures cause multiple problems. Honestly, it's just not apparent to voiceover users how they should control the app. And think about it, we don't say, our cards, our question cards, these things here, are buttons. So you don't realize they can be tapped to reveal the answer. Second, when the answer is revealed, there's no audible notification of what it was. It's not read out by voiceover. You have got to swipe to find it. And then many users have no way of swiping left or right because they can't swipe on their device. It takes very little work to fix these problems, but the payoff is that our app becomes much more available for everyone to use regardless of their access needs. First, we've got to make it really clear our cards are tappable buttons. And this is the simplest using add traits with is button to the Z stack in card view. So bring that up now in card view. We have uh, our Z stack right here, this big thing, boom. We have opacity right here. I'm going to say dot accessibility add traits dot is button. So the user will be told, this is a button, you can activate it. So now it'll say something like, who paid the 13th Doctor Doctor Who? Button. An important hint to users this card can be tapped. Second, we need to tell, uh, help the system read the answer as well as the question. This is possible right now, you know, if the user's got to swipe around after reading the answer, which isn't very friendly, it's, it's far from obvious, I'd say. So to fix this, we're going to detect if the user has... Um, this voiceover support on their device running. And if so, we'll toggle between showing question and showing answer. So we move between the two. And so rather than having question and answer one above the other, we'll actually switch out the question for the answer, which will cause voiceover to read out immediately. So to see the text has changed, it'll just read out again. Now SwiftUI provides for us a new environment property for detecting voiceover. So we'll use that. We'll say up here, at environment, backslash dot, backslash dot, accessibility voiceover enabled, and then var voiceover voiceover enabled like that. And right now we have this code for doing a prompt down here somewhere. We have uh, this card prompt and if showing answer, show the answer as well. Um, we're gonna change that so the prompt and answer are shown in a single text view when we have the voiceover enabled thing working. Uh, so we'll say, if we're in our VStack here, if voiceover is enabled, then we'll show them in the same text view. Otherwise, we'll show them in different text views, keeping that same condition we have right now. 
So the single text view will say, I want the text. Are we currently showing the answer? If show, if so, show card.answer. Otherwise, show card.prompt, like that. Still font large title, and then foreground color uh, black, like I had before. So the same text view shows both the answer and the prompt, so VoiceOver reads it correctly. If you try that with VoiceOver, you'll see it works much, much better. So as they activate the button, bang, the answer's read out, so they know if they're right or wrong. Third, we're gonna make our app easier to use for people who wanna mark it as correct or wrong without using gestures. Uh, right now, our simple images just don't cut it. They show folks who don't have uh, be able to be able to see uh, green red colors shows which, which was right which was wrong which is fine but also read out by the their names they read out as check mark circle image rather than anything actually useful to fix this we've got to replace our buttons in content view as oh, our images content view these things here with buttons that actually remove the cards when they're activated um, and this way folks can uh, activate it that way using voiceover by swiping around rather than trying to use gestures which will not work for them. So we're gonna say uh, in our uh, HDAC here, there is a button, button that will do with animation, remove cards at cards.count minus one with the label of xmark.circle like that. And it's complaining a little bit. Must have made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, the mistake is there. There we go. Uh, then we'll give it a nice label. We'll say you have the accessibility label of wrong and access hint of mark your answer as being incorrect. Then our spacer here. And the same thing again for the circle version. So button with animation remove card at cards.count minus one with the label, oops, this time down here, with the label of this again, blah, 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 like that. And the access label of correct and access hint as being, mark your answer as being correct, like that. So. We're making it clear to folks now, you can tap on the buttons to do the same thing rather than trying to actually uh, use gestures. But again, a very, very hard to use for many people here. Um, I would say we aren't doing anything different. If it's right or wrong, that'll come in your challenges shortly. Uh, both of them should remove the card at cards that count minus one, but that's fine. I wanna leave something in there for your challenges. Now, because these buttons remain on screen, when the last card has been removed, we've got to add a little guard to our code to make sure we don't try and remove a card that doesn't actually exist. And so, down in remove card, we'll say at the very top, guard index is greater or equal to zero, else return. Don't try and remove when there's no cards there at all. Finally, we can make these cards visible when differentiate without color is, is used here, or when voiceover is enabled. Either one of those two should trigger these buttons being visible. We'll say uh, up in our environment properties up here, give me at environment environment backslash dot access voiceover enabled bar uh, access, uh, I should do voiceover enabled, <laughs> there we go. Much easier, boom, that one there. And now our condition becomes, if we are using without color, where is it? Uh, here we go. If without color uh, or voiceover enabled, then show those buttons. And with those changes in place, our app works significantly better. No more random unhelpful things being read out. We've got labels and hints and decorative images. We've hidden things from voiceover that can't be seen. Uh, it's got buttons tapping if you can't use gestures. It's just much, much better. Before we're done, I'd like to add one tiny extra change. Right now, if you drag a little like this to one side, I don't have time, let's start again. <laughs> let's do that again. Uh, we'll drag slightly here and then release. 
it snaps back to the center, which is a bit of a weird effect. It doesn't feel very nice to the user, I don't think, like that. And so, to make it feel nicer for folks who do drag and release like this, we're gonna add a very gentle spring animation to our movement here, so it's clearer to the user what actually happened, you know, visually. So, we're gonna add an animation modifier to the end of the Z stack here in card view. So, we have on type pleasure here, that's fine. We'll say dot animation is dot spring. Spring. Watching the value of our offset like that. Now let's give it a try. It's a bit nicer, but you'll spot another little issue here, just fine. I'll drag it and release it. There we go. Look at that. That's looking much, much nicer. So let's slide back into place really smoothly. Now notice, notice, when I go to the right here, going green, green, green. When I release, it becomes red, then white. That is expected, don't worry. More on that later on. 